Good morning, sir. Good morning. Mr. Ashby, I'd ask you. I'd remind you to keep your voice up as best as you can, all right, sir? All right. Would you tell us your name, please, and spell your last name for our court reporter? Kevin Ashby, A-S-H-B-Y. And Mr. Ashby, are you currently serving a federal sentence? Yes. What is that sentence, sir? A life sentence. Does that relate to your involvement with the Doug Relations Group and various murders and robberies that you participated in? Yes. And do those murders include those of Bailey and Robinson? Yes. And then is there another murder that's not directly part of this case? Yes. Sir, when were you charged with these murder offenses? August of 2013. And sir, did you plead guilty or go to trial? Pled guilty. Remember what charge or charges you pled to? Murder in aid of racketeering and racketeering conspiracy. And do you remember when you pled guilty, sir? March of 2014. And which judge did you plead guilty in front of, sir? Judge Jackson. And which judge sentenced you? Judge Jackson. Mr. Ashby, with the assistance of the court security officer, I would like to hand you a series of exhibits. I try and go through these in order, sir. If you would look at the first one, Mr. Ashby, did you plead guilty with the plea agreement? Yes. And you have government exhibit L6A on the top there? Yes. And do you recognize what that is? Plea agreement. Sir, would you take it out of the sleeve and just go through it and make sure your initials are on it and that you signed at the end of it? Yes. Your Honor, I'd offer government's exhibit L-6A. Any objection? No, sir. No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. No, sir. L-6A will be admitted. Mr. Ashby, the first paragraph. Excuse me. L6A, Detective Carucci. Yeah, it's L6. Mr. Ashby, the first paragraph shows the charge that you pled to. Isn't that right, sir? Yes. And you pled in court, sir? Yes. You had a counsel for this plea agreement? Yes. Sir, did the plea agreement that we're looking at here include a provision whereby you agreed to cooperate with the United States? Yes. And what's your understanding of your obligation to cooperate? The truth. Do you hope to receive a sentencing reduction if you cooperate truthfully? Yes. Has any reduction been promised to you? No. You understand, Mr. Ashby, that it would be the government that would move for a reduction if your assistance is substantial? Yes. But do you know who actually decides the motion for reduction? The judge. Okay, which judge? Jackson. Mr. Ashby, in addition to this plea agreement and these convictions related to the racketeering and the murders, were you previously charged in an earlier federal case? Yes. And would you look at L6, sir? Do you have that as your next document in your pile there? Yes. Do you recognize what that is, Mr. Ashby? Plea agreement. And is that your plea agreement, sir? Yes. And would you just take it out and verify that your initials are on it? That you have signed it? Yes. Sir, what charge does that plea agreement relate to? Gun charge. And was that plea agreement prior to or earlier to the first one we discussed? Earlier to? Your Honor, I'd offer government's exhibit L6. No objections, Your Honor. L6 will be admitted. Mr. Ashby, if I bring up the date first, September 19th of 2013, is that when you pled guilty on that charge? Yes. And that was to a felon in possession of a firearm, sir? Yes. What sentence did you receive on that charge, sir? 30 months. Now, Mr. Ashby, these plea agreements were in 2013 and 2014. 
Prior to your pleading guilty in these cases, had you reached out to law enforcement to provide information? Yes. Did that include information about the Bailey and Robinson murders? Yes. Was that prior to you being charged federally in either of these cases? No. It was after you were charged federally? Before. Before you were charged? Yes. Sir, I'd like to ask you some questions about your background. Would you tell us how old you are? 28. And what's the highest level of schooling you have completed? The ninth. Are you working on your GED? Yes. Where did you do your growing up? Newport News, Denby area. Was there a particular neighborhood in the Denby area that you grew up in? Aqueduct, Warwick Lawns, Warwick Townhomes. Do you have brothers and sisters, Mr. Ashby? Yes. How many? Three brothers, three sisters. And who are your brothers, sir? Anthony Ashby, Douglas Ashby, Calvin Boyd. Anthony Ashby, does he have a nickname? Boosie. How about Douglas Ashby? Mance. Sir, during your growing up in the Warwick Lawns and Aqueduct area, did you hang out in an area of the Aqueduct Apartments? Yes. What particular area did you hang out in? All over, but main area was the cut. And what did you do in the cut, sir? Sell drugs. And did you sell with other individuals? Yes. Who are some of the individuals you sold drugs with? Eric Pridgen, Herbert Pridgen, Maurice McLean, Robbie Bowles, Douglas Ashby, Anthony Ashby, Mustafa Muhammad. Do you see Eric Pridgen in the courtroom today, sir? Yes. Would you identify him for us by where he's sitting and what he's wearing? Sitting over there wearing a gray suit. Indicating the defendant, Eric Pridgen, your honor. Record will so reflect. Do you see Herbert Pridgen in the courtroom today? Yes. And where is he sitting and what is he wearing? Sitting over there wearing a black suit. Indicating the defendant, Herbert Pridgen, Your Honor. Record will so reflect. And do you see defendant Maurice McLean in the courtroom today? Yes. And where is he sitting and what is he wearing? He's sitting over there wearing a black suit. And would you tell us what position at the table he's at? To the left. Indicating the defendant, Maurice McLean, Your Honor. Record will so reflect. Did Herbert Pridgen, excuse me, did Eric Pridgen have a nickname? Rabbit. What about Herbert Pridgen? Bach. Maurice McLean? Mo. How did you know Eric Pridgen, sir? Since we was young. And what neighborhood was he from? Warwick Town Homes. What about Herbert Pridgen? How did you know him? Since we was young. And what neighborhood was he from? And he did his growing up. Warwick Town Homes. And sir, were you closer in age to one of the Pridgen brothers? Herbert Pridgen. Do you know if Herbert Pridgen had a friendship with Mustafa Muhammad? Yes. Would you see them hang out together and spend time together? Yes. How did you know Maurice McLean? All my life. And what neighborhood was he from? Beachmont, all over Aqueduct too. Warwick Town Houses, St. Michael's. Did you see Eric Pridgen selling drugs in the Aqueduct, Warwick Lawns area? Yes. Did you sell drugs with him? Yes. What about Herbert Pridgen? Did you see him selling drugs? And did you sell drugs with him? Yes. And Maurice McLean, did you see him selling drugs in the Aqueduct, Warwick Lawns area? Yes. Now, Mr. Ashby, were these individuals that you spent time with in the cut and selling drugs with and some of the individuals you've mentioned part of a group? Yes. What was the name of that group, sir? Thug Relations. Have you heard of the phrase, from the duck to the lawns? Yes. And what does that phrase mean? 
from Aqueduct to Warwick Lawns. Does that refer to a territory, sir? Yes. What sort of territory does it refer to as part of the group Thug Relations? Aqueduct, Warwick Lawns, Warwick Townhouses. What activities did Thug Relations engage in? Selling drugs, home invasions, murders. I'm sorry? Murders. Was it more than just a rap group? Yes. Did it grow to include other individuals that grew up in those neighborhoods? Yes. Did you all socialize with one another in clubs? Yes. Did you all support one another? Yes. Sir, you mentioned, you mentioned home invasion robberies and murders. Did you participate in those types of activities with other people from Thug Relations? Yes. What role did you often play in doing so? Driver, look out. Sir, did the participation you had in Thug Relations and these activities, the robberies, the murders, the drug dealing, form a basis for your plea to racketeering conspiracy and murder in aid of racketeering? Yes. Sir, you've talked about selling drugs. What types of drugs would you be selling? Crack cocaine, cocaine, marijuana, ecstasy. And would these be sold from that area, the cut you refer to in Aqueduct? Yes. Sir, could individuals who are not associated with thug relations sell drugs in the Aqueduct or Warwick Lawns area? No. What would happen to them if they did? Beat up or shot? And did Thug Relations protect its territory against other gangs or groups? Yes. How would it do so? Beat up or shot? Going back to the cut area of Aqueduct, was there a reason that you all dealt in that particular area? You could see the cars coming in and going out. And why was that important? You want to know who's coming in and who's going out, police or anyone? If you saw police coming into Aqueduct, what would you do? Go in somebody's house or run somewhere else? And were there particular apartments that you could go to if you saw police coming into Aqueduct? Yes. Whose apartments were those? Did you see the defendant, Eric Pridgen, going into those apartments at times? Yes. What about Herbert Pridgen? Yes. What about Maurice McLean? Yes. Mr. Ashby, when you were selling drugs in the cut, were you armed, sir? Yes. If you saw the police come into Aqueduct, what would you do with your weapons? Run in somebody's house with it. And what would you do with it when you got in there? Keep it on me until they leave or put it up. When you say put it up, what do you mean? Put it in a closet somewhere. Did you ever see other individuals who were part of the thug relations put their weapons up? Yes. Who would you see put their weapons up, sir? Herbert Pridgen, Eric Pridgen, Maurice McLean. What about your brothers? Yes. Sir, did you ever see thug relations graffiti in the aqueduct area? Yes. And were there some offshoot groups of thug relations? What you mean, like rival? No, sir. Were there some other parts of Thug Relations that did rap as well? Yes. And what were those groups? The Grime Team Click. Were there any others? Nah. Were you a part of any of those groups? Grime Team Click. Okay. I'd like to show you what's been marked and already admitted as Government Exhibit L-73. If we could pull up the first page, Detective Carucci. And this will be on the screen in front of you, Mr. Ashby. Mr. Ashby, do you see that HTC there, sir? Yes. Do you know what that's a reference to? Hollow tip click. What is hollow tip click? It's hollow tip click. It wasn't really no group, just a name of something that's said in a rap. Was that associated with thug relations? Yes. If we could go to the next page of that exhibit, page two. Mr. Ashby, there's that TGU reference on the right there, sir. Do you know what that means? I don't know what that means. 
All right. How about down the lower left? It says RIP Timmy 03. Do you know what that's related to? Yeah. What is it related to, sir? A friend of ours that died. And who was the friend? Timmy Brown. And when did he die? 2003. How did he die? Gunned down. Who was he gunned down by? People say AWA. I don't know. After Timmy was gunned down in 2003, did people from the aqueduct area get together more often? Yes. And was that for protection, sir? Yes. And how did you all do that protection? Keep guns on us. Detective Carucci, if we could just go to, I think, the last page of that exhibit. I'm sorry, second to last page, page six. Mr. Ashby, do you see those references to those various names there, sir? Yes. Do you recognize some of those names? Yes. Moody is who? Mustafa Muhammad. And Rab? Eric Pridgen. What about that reference to young Kev? Do you know who that is? That's me. Do you know someone named Robbie Bowles, Mr. Ashby? Yes. Was he a part of the group that was selling drugs in the aqueduct area? Yes. Was he a part of the thug relations? Yes. What about Ronnie Rooks? Do you know Ronnie Rooks? Yes. Was he a part of the group selling drugs as well? Yes. And was he associated with thug relations? Yes. Mr. Ashby, do you know if thug relations had disputes with other groups over territory? Yeah. And which groups did thug relations have disputes with? Dump Squad and Peace Stones. Where was the Dump Squad from? Ridley Circle, Dickerson Courts, Harbor Homes, Downtown. Is that in a separate area from Denby? Yeah. What about the Peace Stones? What area were they from? Beachmont, Courthouse. And where is that located in relation to Denby, sir? Same area. Okay. And would these disputes ever result in violence? Yes. Would you all talk about the violence and the disputes with other members of the group? Yes. Sir, I'd next like to show you and have you look at a portion of L-70. If we could pull up the first page of that, Detective Carucci. Mr. Ashby, I just want to ask you about this paragraph here and these neighborhoods. Do you see the neighborhood's aqueduct apartments, Mariner's Landing apartments, and so forth? Yes. Do you recognize these locations? Yes. And do you recognize these locations in terms of drug dealing that was done by Thug Relations? Yes. And where do these areas cover in terms of where Thug Relations did its business? The Denby area, Duck to the Lawns. Do you know Thug Relations to sell drugs and operate in the St. Michael's apartment area? Yeah. What about Heritage Trace Apartments? Yes. Aqueduct and Warwick Lawns? Yeah. What about Mariner's Landing? Yes. Sir, was loyalty between the members part of Thug Relations? Yes. How so? What you mean? Would you tell us why loyalty was important? So we can all stay together as one? Was there a view about cooperating with law enforcement? What did you say? Was there a view about cooperating with law enforcement? Yes. And what was that view? Don't do it. What was the view of those who did cooperate with law enforcement? Be dealt with. How would they be dealt with? Beat up, shot. If someone from Thug Relations did cooperate with law enforcement, could they still be part of the group? Nope. If someone from Thug Relations cooperated, would it pose a danger to the rest of you in the group? Would it pose a danger to the rest of us? Yes, sir. Yes. How so? If they knew what they was talking about. Okay, Mr. Ashby, 
We've talked about some of your federal charges. Are these federal charges your only felony charges, sir? No. And do you have prior state convictions for possession of firearms? Yes. And do you have prior state convictions when you were a juvenile for grand larceny? Yes. Do you have other prior state felony convictions? Nope. Okay, Mr. Ashby, in terms of your background, have you had any issues with your mental health in the past? Yes. And do these issues include hearing voices sometimes? Yes. Has that been resolved or it's still ongoing, sir? It's been resolved. How has it been resolved? Through meditation, ignoring them. Sir, have you had some evaluations in the past as part of your experience with the criminal justice system? Yes. And do you know what the result of those evaluations has been in terms of your diagnosis? Malingering. And what does malingering mean, sir? Making things up. And was this as a result of an evaluation you had? Yes. And why did you make things up, Mr. Ashby? Trying to get off my cases. Are you on any medication or treatment currently, sir? No. And do you have any, as far as you know, any ongoing mental health issues? No. Do the issues that you have had in the past affect your memory or perception of events? No. Mr. Ashby, we also talked about selling drugs, but had you been a user of drugs? Yes. What types of drugs have you used, sir? Ecstasy, marijuana, cocaine. And were you a regular user of ecstasy? Sometimes, sometimes not. What about marijuana? Yes. What about cocaine? Sometimes, sometimes not. What is the last time you used any narcotic substance, sir? Since 2012. Is that when you were first locked up and been locked up ever since? Yes. Does your use of, your prior use of ecstasy, of marijuana, of cocaine, affect your memory, sir? No. Mr. Ashby, I'd now like to discuss a number of events with you, sir. Do you recall being at a shot house in November of 2009 where a shooting occurred? Yes. Yes. 